You might be wondering why we have so many different finite difference formulas. A big part of the answer is accuracy. Let's make a definition. We define the truncation error tau of a finite difference method as a difference between the exact derivative and the finite difference approximation. We usually express this as a Taylor series in the spacing size h. For example, here is our first forward difference. The first term in the numerator depends on h, so we can expand it as a series. Then the f of 0 terms cancel out, and the first remaining term is f prime at 0. The next term is 1 half h times f double prime of 0, and the rest of the terms are higher powers in h. The truncation error is f prime at 0 minus what we just found, so it starts with the h term, followed by higher powers of h, which we can consider to be negligible as h goes to 0. The most important feature is the exponent of h in the leading term. Since it's equal to 1 here, we say this finite difference method is first order accurate. In general, the order of accuracy of a formula is the leading power of h in the truncation error. For the most part, including more f values into a formula increases its order of accuracy. For example, here is our smallest centered formula. That should be 2h in the denominator. Remember that we derived it using three points even though one of them dropped out of the final result. This time I expand the first term out to one higher degree in h, and the second term is the same series with negative h in place of h. Once again, the f of zero terms cancel. The terms in h combine to give f prime of zero. The terms in h squared cancel out, in fact all the even powers will. The next term gives us 1 sixth h squared f triple prime at 0, and so on. Hence, the truncation error starts out with an h squared term. So we say the order of accuracy is 2. This is a lot better than first order accuracy. It's essentially the square of the error in that forward difference formula. So here I define a smooth function, and this is the exact value of its derivative at 0. So here I'm going to set a value for h, compute the forward difference, which is first order accurate, compute the second order center difference, and then compare the exact value to the two finite difference values. So as is typically the case, the second order value is going to be a lot more accurate than the first order value compared to the true value. It's a little easier to see if we just look at the differences so that we get the errors. And again, you see that the second order method is much more accurate. I'll do the same thing after cutting h in half now. So for a first order method, you expect the error to go down by a factor of 2 to the first power and in the second order it should go down by a factor of about 2 to the second power, and that's what we see. Here's a bit more systematic experiment, so I do it for a bunch of different values of h, and if you look, roughly speaking, the second order error is about the square of the first order error as we expect. These things come out very clearly if you graph the errors. I'm doing so on a log-log scale here, 
And notice that I've reversed the direction of the x-axis. It's traditional to put the direction of convergence of decreasing error from left to right, which means h has to decrease from left to right. So that's the way this graph is set up. And the blue curve is the errors of the first order method, with the yellow line being perfect first order convergence. This is a line of slope negative one. The red graph is the second order errors, and the purple line is perfect second order convergence. That's the line of slope negative two. Now we need to look at the conditioning of these formulas. Let's define d, as a, d of h as the two-point forward difference. There's an elephant in the room that we've ignored up to this point. We want to make h small to decrease the error, but in doing so, we create the difference of nearby values in the numerator. And that leads to subtractive cancellation. We can quantify this effect using the condition number of subtraction. By design, the denominator here is approximately h times f prime at zero. So the relative rounding error in computing d is roughly f0 over f0 prime times 1 over h times machine epsilon. Now our definition of tau uses absolute error, not relative error. So if we want to compare the rounding error to tau, we need to express rounding error in absolute terms as well. So we can multiply the expression we have by d, which we already know is f0 prime minus the truncation error. which is f0 prime plus something times h. And when we multiply it out, the first term is a constant times machine epsilon over h. The rest of the terms are smaller. And what's key is that the round off error grows as h goes to zero. So round off is growing while truncation is shrinking. So where do they meet? that's when the rounding error is roughly the same as the truncation error. This means that h is on the order of the square root of machine epsilon. I'll call this h opt because it suggests the h that gives optimal accuracy. Now the truncation error is proportional to h, so the optimal error is also on the order of square root of epsilon. In other words, the very best that we can hope to do using this formula is eight accurate digits out of the 16 that are available to us. Finally, finally let's suppose that the order of accuracy is just some arbitrary number m. The same argument works up to the point where we have this balance between round off and truncation. Now the truncation error is proportional to h to the mth power. When we work it out, this means that h opt is now machine epsilon to the 1 over m plus 1 power. Now the optimal truncation error is h opt to the nth power. So we get epsilon to the m over m plus one. As m increases, this exponent of machine epsilon gets closer to one, which means we get a larger and larger fraction of the digits correct. Here's an experiment very similar to the last one that I did. It's written a little bit differently, so now I'm being a little bit fancy here and I'm writing three finite difference formulas, first order, second order, and fourth order, and I'm using the inner product form. These are my weights. 
I've just evaluated the functions at all the nodes. I've evaluated the function at all the nodes at once. And now, if we plot the errors. We see something pretty interesting. So here's our first order formula doing its first order convergence. Here's the second order formula and here's the fourth order formula. So for a while they all converge according to the truncation error. But in the meantime, this line represents 1 over h. That's the size of the round off errors. And so as h gets smaller, of course, we're getting closer and closer to numerical subtractive cancellation. It's getting larger and larger, that effect. And at some point, when these two curves meet, essentially, the accuracy stops, grow stops sh shrinking and starts getting worse. For each of these methods, that occurs at a different place. So for the first order method, we reach approximately the square root of epsilon when the round off error starts to take over. And that's roughly the accuracy we can get in the best case. For the second order method, the optimal h should be occurring at about epsilon to the one third, so somewhere between five and six. But the accuracy we get is to the two thirds, the square of that, so 10 to the minus 10th. And then finally, for the fourth order method, we should be getting down to about um, epsilon to the one quarter power, so somewhere around 10 to the minus 4. And then the error is the fourth power of that, so getting pretty close now to full machine precision. So not only do the higher order methods converge faster, but they get down lower before they hit this rising truncation I'm sorry, rising round-off error curve.